from school for the blind i by the grace of god i had the opportunity to further at my senior high school from there i moved to university of cape coast i did bachelor of education i majored in english and history and i'm currently doing an internship as a paralegal with a law firm christian <laughs> Hello, welcome to Faces of Ghana on Yen TV once again with me, Philip Abutiati. This is the show where we tell inspirational stories. And as I always say, if you don't get inspired on this show, you definitely can't get inspired anywhere. Today on the show, I'm bringing you the story of Karuthes Tete. Karuthes is a visually impaired gentleman who has defied all odds, has made it to law school, and is almost becoming a lawyer. We get to interact with him to find out what his challenges have been along the way, his inspiration, and all that. But before we bring you the conversation with Karuthes, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on all our social media platforms, and let's get interactive. And also, if there's any story, such as the story of Karuthes, that you think we could share, feel free to slide into our DMs. Okay, Karuthes, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, thank you very much. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing fantastic, my dear Grace. Good to see you. And we want to know a bit about you. Can you tell us about yourself? Who is Karuthes? All right, so Karuthes Tete is a proud native of Winneba, a young purpose driven individual who has passed to make positive impact to the society, be a legal luminary who will be the voice for the voiceless. Who advocate for the less privileged and also you know be, be able to inspire others so that's what about characters briefly your name is characters i've not heard it before <laughs> it doesn't seem like a common name uh, yeah it was actually given to me by my grandfather it means huge and powerful right i see yes. characters uh, were you born this way no no i wasn't born with my blindness <laughs> Um, I acquired it through uh, an allergy. At the age of 11 years, I wasn't feeling well and I was taken to one hospital in Winneba. I, fortunately, the medicines or the drugs that they were, that were giving to me, I was allergic to them. So that resulted in my, my blindness. It actually caused a lot of damage. You know, I had rashes all over my body on the bed sheet you realize that my skin will get stuck to the bed sheet at the point in time they have to use vaseline to smear the bed sheet so that, so that the, the, the skin doesn't get stuck so uh, that is how eventually when i was discharged that was when i realized i've lost the sight wow so i mean we, we obviously don't want to mention the name of the hospital no. the name of your drug no. but i want to find out did the hospital compensate you in any way no 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 in fact at the initial stages they were even denying that they had faulted or they have committed any medical negligence you know when, when it happened i was transferred my parents my family took me to another hospital if you quanta hospital attack riding so it was there that they diagnosed that i've suffered from uh, an allergy there was a johnson syndrome yeah, so but the, the initial hospital went by they they didn't take responsibility but the attention was drawn to it. Certainly. The, 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 the doctor was aware of the effects, but I don't know, he still didn't accept the, the blame. So so at that time, you know, when the whole allergy thing started and you realized that no, you're not seeing well as you used to. Mm -hmm. What was what thoughts was running through your mind? Were you seeing it as one of those things that would just disappear? Or... Oh yes, it, at the initial stages I felt it was, you know, one of the sicknesses or diseases maybe headache and or you have eye pain and it will go but with time moving from one hospital to the other waking up every day moving from one church to the other there was no improvement then i realized that you know things have turned into a, i mean has taken a new turn that was when i realized i have become blind to accept it we'll talk about your low ambitions later on i'm just a bit interested in this whole story mm -hmm. so when the allergic reaction started and you started losing your sight mm -hmm. 
typical of Afghanian society mm -hmm. where people giving suggestions oh maybe you should try this herbal medicine maybe you should try this mixture maybe you should try this concussion maybe you should visit this native oh doctor. yes some uh, suggestions came let's visit this pasta you go they will give you some 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 items let's visit this herbalist some the family i mean uh how do i say took steps but others we just ignored we just ignored. so th there were such suggestions but some we we took steps we visited the pastors but there was no change there was no improvement the story was still the same let's stay a little bit longer on your personal life mm. so have you been in a relationship oh yes yes i have been in a relationship i mean you lost your sight at age 11. Yes. so obviously at that time you were not in a relationship no, 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 how no. did you see to know that oh there's a lady i like i want to be in a relationship with her well i i believe that i always say we don't see with our sight especially with love matters you have to use your brain and your heart if you follow your sight, you may be deceived. In fact, you will be deceived. So you see the person, I see the character of the person. I see the person and I see the behavior. I see the reactions. So that is what drawn me to the person. So it wasn't about the physical appearance, but it was about what was in that person. That was what caught my attention to get closer to her. Yes have you felt discriminated against before maybe growing up in school have people called you names have people said they were military stuff to you before that have really hurt you uh di discrimination is one of the challenges faced by almost all persons with disability discrimination stigmatization personally i have suffered some sometimes you are denied certain opportunities because of your disability you, you suffer discrimination in relationship. Sometimes even when you're going to look for a job, you suffer some discrimination, even amongst your peers on campus. Sometimes there's discrimination. Let me give you a practical example. Sometimes there'll be a study group and nobody would want to associate with you. Do you are very intelligent, but because you have a disability, you know, they may, they, they will over sympathize, which will lead to discrimination. So yes. But what's one thing that somebody has ever said or done to you that made you look back and you're like, oh God, why did I become this? Like, made you feel so bad, an experience maybe you'll never forget, which was very sensitive to you. Um, said, I cannot recollect, but at, I remember, you know, when uh, I was at the Kropon School for the Blind, I had to move from Winneba to Kopon School for the Blind. Anytime we go to Kaneshi, you know, my mom had to carry my chakcha bag on her head with my hand under her armpit. We have to, I mean, fight our way through the crowd or the overhead. Those were, those are times that, when it gets to those moments, when I remember them, I wish for sight. I say, oh God, if I could see, I could move alone. When I became blind at the initial stages, my friends would go out to play. I can't go with them. Football, I can't go with them. So when we're in those moments, I, I, I feel down. But God has been good. God has been good. Okay, you know, uh, there's an observation I've made when I was in the University of Ghana. Mm. I realized that people who are physically challenged, mm. for instance, the visually impaired people are paired with those who can see in one eye or mm. visually impaired people are paired with those who can see but cannot walk and so are in a wheelchair mm. and they move together mm. and i used to wonder no these are people who only why are they all together is it why is that usually the case is it your preference that maybe because you are all in the same situation you understand each other and okay. people who are in quotes who are normal, mm. do not have the patience that you require, or what I really want to understand that issue. Um, let me start on this note that I don't support or subscribe to uh, such moments where we have to pair persons with disabilities in the same group. We are advocating for inclusiveness. So someone with a disability should be paired with someone who physically may not have a disability but in most cases you know because i have a disability you also have a disability so we understand each other we are in the same 
let me say, port. So you will understand me better. You have that patience. But because you as a sighted person, you don't have that disability, it becomes that difficult for you to really understand. So that's why sometimes some may feel comfortable being around with another person who has a different disability. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll come back to disability related issues, but let's talk a bit more about your achievement. Mm -hmm. So your educational life, okay. how has it been? Can you walk us through your journey, through All your right. educational life? So from School for the Blind, I, by the grace of God, I had the opportunity to further at Ukwap, my senior high school. Um, from there, I moved to University of Cape Coast. When I graduated 2015, I had the chance to of course, well, I did Bachelor of Education. I majored in English and History. I became teaching assistant at the Department of English. Then I had the opportunity again to go back to Federal Law. Uh, yes, and I'm currently doing an internship as a paralegal with a law firm, Grace Chambers. And I'll use your medium to really appreciate my mentor, lawyer Benedict Bosu Simpson. He has been a great, a great man in my life who has really you know, bought into my, he, he understands me and always ready to support and, and train me to become a great lawyer. All right. So now, um, after the Bachelor of Education yes. in English, yes. you know, we'll come to the challenges, but yes. I'm quite privy to a number of challenges that physical challenge people face in the country. Hmm. What was driving you to go back to do law? Because law, uh, it's very demanding. Yes, it's, it's one of the very jealous uh, programs you can ever come across. But two things. One, the grace of God. It is all by the grace of God. And again, the vision and the dream I have to be in a position to affect society positively, to be in a position to inspire people to be in a position to continue my advocacy, to be in a position to serve as the voiceless. That is that driving force that is pulling me. So when I'm faced with those challenges, I don't want to give up because I know some, someone somewhere and someday will need my inspiration. I have to inspire that young boy there. I have to advocate for that woman out there. I have to defend that man who has been unjustly abused so these are the things that drive me drive me to 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 walk through the challenges and i know i know that there is always light at the end of the tunnel okay talking about challenges um let's talk about some of the challenges you've encountered you've, you've encountered you mentioned uh discrimination, discrimination one, one what, what are some of the other challenges for instance do people try to take advantage of you maybe someone has to you bought something even the person never got the nomination the person oh, also yes, has to yes, change it's true I, I, that, 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 changing yes, you before. yes classic example classic example if you are not fortunate to work with someone they can easily steal you they will give you one cd and tell you it's five cds you know they say that there is a, a sign on the notes that you can easily feel it's, it's not correct it's not well there, there appear to be a sign but you can't really feel it so if you are not careful it happens and i have suffered some before you go and buy something special on campus and when they are trying to give you the change they will short short um, short change check some short change yes so it happens. how about school you know mm -hmm. reading yeah yeah how, how yeah, do you yeah. cope hmm. because those big voluminous law books yes how do you cope? How it, do you... it 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 and it is one of the challenges assessing assessing the the reading materials you know, by the grace of God, with the aid of technology, we depend or I depend heavily on soft copies. Okay. So I have my laptop, which has a voice speech on it or a narrator. So when I get these materials in soft copies, the machine is able to read. But the challenge comes when you are not able to get the soft copies. You know, most African books or Ghanaian books are not in soft copies. It's only the English book. So if the lecturer has made certain recommendations or you want to read certain articles which are not in soft copies it becomes a challenge and you have to fall on someone to read to you and you know you you can't get the person 24 7 so it, it becomes a challenge another big challenge is with finances 
our things are very, very expensive. Very, very, very expensive. But let me use this opportunity to thank my family, extended family, and some individuals who have supported, supported. And I'll use this medium. I, I, because of the challenges and experiences I've gone through, I want to come up with a, an NGO, set up a foundation, and you know where we'll be visiting schools, we're visiting various district rural areas to you know, encourage individuals to support the less privileged. Yeah, so th these are some of the challenges, and th that is how the challenges have made me. You know, sometimes you are in a situation and you are pushed to come up with solutions so that your neighbor doesn't go through such. All right, carry this. Um, mm. Let's see, some 50, 60 years from now, after you have retired, mm. what do you want to look back to, to say, oh, this is what I have achieved. This is my, this, this was my dream when I was a young man and I have actually been able to achieve it. What is your biggest and ultimate dream in life? Okay, so 50, 60, 100 years, I want to look back and see that legacy. Legacy of someone who was a great lawyer and advocated for the less privileged. Someone who had a foundation and is still existing that has made great and massive impact to the society. As I talk to you now, Last year, I sat for the law entrance exams, but I was a victim to you know, the mass failure. I couldn't get the opportunity. I'm hoping, and let me again use this medium to appeal to the authorities and the president that they should, if there could be an increase in the intake of you know, um, students who, 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 who graduate with law degrees to further their professional course. At least if there could be uh, some quota for persons with disability because at the end of the day we are coming out to serve our societies mm. so i believe that um, when we are able to do this it will help greatly so that's where i want to get to in the next 60 70 years to come right so you've made them um, your appeal to authorities already i was coming to that yeah um what motivates you, in spite of all the challenges, the difficulties, what really keeps you going? Yes, I, I, as I said earlier, is that that's driving force in me, that passion that I have to serve mankind, nothing more, nothing less. I just want to be in a position to inspire others. And that is what is motivating me. I want people to be inspired by my story. I want people to be motivated. That is all. That that is that is the ultimate. And I believe that when by the grace of God I'm able to do this, all other things shall be added. But you know, we see that you're visually impaired. Mm -hmm. Are there other things you can do? Mm -hmm. For instance, that you see as gifts. Mm. Oh yes, yes. By the grace of God, I, I sing. I'm the president for our church choir. I play keyboard. I play drums. Uh, yes, those are few things I God has gifted me with. Wow. Okay, so we are about concluding the interview. Okay. But I would like you to just say something to somebody who is viewing you, who may mm. be inspired by your story, somebody who may be looking at attaining a higher height but feels discouraged, mm. feels he doesn't have what it takes. It could, it could be resources, it could be a physical disability, something. Yes. I want you to say something to such a person. Thank you very much. Um, God has blessed us with a lot of abilities. The ability to see, to hear, to walk. A lot of abilities the fact that you have lost one ability it doesn't make you a disabled person your disability may be with finances your disability may be with support mm. but that's don't don't allow yourself to be prevented by those challenges or those disabilities always listen to that inner voice in you tell yourself every morning i can make it keep trying keep trying and one day it shall work out for you have faith in whatever that you do. It takes just a single day for that change to come. You can't give up. Just keep pressing on. And 
don't always wait on others before you create your opportunities. Don't always wait to depend on others. You can create your own opportunities because if that happens, you will always remain when you are where you are. Okay, how it is. In case maybe someone has heard your story, your person wants to engage you. Mm. It could be an employer, it could be someone who just wants to reach out to you. Mm. Uh, are you comfortable putting out your maybe your social media handles or even your contact if okay. you are you want to? Oh no problem. I mean, as I said, I always want to be in a position to inspire. Okay. And if anyone out there is also willing to support the vision with the foundation with inspiring the person is welcomed. My number is 0249-237564. And the person can also email me caltestete18 at gmail.com. Caltestete18 at gmail.com. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome, my brother. My viewers, so you heard from Karutes. I told you, if you don't get inspired here, you can't get inspired anywhere. Well, this has been Faces of Ghana. My name is Philip Abutiati. Remember to keep interacting with us on all our social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Keep sharing this video. Share it until you can share no more. And if there's any such story that we could cover, feel free to write to us via our DMs on all the social media platforms. I'll see you again on another edition of the show.